Ghana is building a new gas power plant, not just to produce more electricity, but to fix a deeper problem, one tied to its energy supply, national debt, and future growth. We need to have a second gas processing plant as soon as possible. And I believe that the technical committee will be able to finish their work in time for us to commission a contractor or a business to be able to build a second gas processing plant. It is so important for our country, so important for our welfare, and so important for the economy to run. Currently, we have a gas deficit of about 100 mm scarf. And so we are compelled to buy very expensive liquid fuels to fill that gap. It's in the light of this that government is taking a bold decision that we construct our own second gas processing plant. That can give us savings of close to $500 million every year. To understand why this plant is so important to the country, let's first look at how Ghana produces its electricity. Ghana's energy comes from three main sources. First, hydro, from dams like the Akosombo and Bui. This makes about 36% of the country's electricity. Next is thermal plants, which burn gas, diesel, or crude oil. These supply around 63% of the country's power. And finally, renewables like solar. These account for just 1%, but they are slowly growing. In the past, Ghana relied heavily on hydro, but with rainfall becoming less predictable, hydropower is no more reliable. That pushed the country towards thermal plants that run on imported fuel. The problem, they are expensive, polluting, and unstable when prices go up. Thankfully, Ghana discovered natural gas of its coast, and in the year 2015, it made a big move. It built its first gas processing plant at Etiabo. The Etiabo plant takes raw gas from offshore fields, cleans it, and sends it to thermal power stations. Since then, it's been a game changer. It saves Ghana over $300 million a year on fuel imports and it helps keep the lights on in big cities like Takrade and Accra. But now, demand is rising again. Ghana needs more power, and it needs it fast. That's why the government is building a new gas power plant. This new plant will generate over 400 megawatts of electricity. That's enough to power more than 1 million homes. It will run on local gas, which means it will be cheaper, more reliable, and less polluting than oil-based power plants. There is another issue. Ghana's energy sector is buried in debt. As of 2024, it owes over $1.5 billion to power producers and fuel suppliers. These include companies like Sun Power, Sun On Asogli, Car Powership, and AXA Energy. Some of them have even threatened to shut down because they are not getting paid. 24 billion cities in the energy sector, uh, either you call it subsidies, under recoveries or shortfalls. This year it is estimated at over 30 billion in terms of the shortfall. Yesterday we had a session with the finance minister and a lot of the people here were there. We require about 1.1 billion dollars to procure liquid fuels alone. Unfortunately, and the PRC is here, the liquid fuel is not part of the tariff structure. And so you would be buying close to $15 billion of liquid fuel and that has to be paid by the central government because it's not part of the tariff structure. As if that is not enough, what you call the reserve margin, which is a necessity, because you just don't bring plants to meet exactly what you consume. What if one plant goes off for maintenance or any situation? That is not also part of the tariff structure. More importantly, the tariff itself, ECG, is unable to collect all the monies. And so you're having a deficit of about 2 billion CDs every month when it comes to ECG's collections. When you add that deficit and you add the fuel, which is not part of the pass-through, you are looking at over 30 billion. Car Power has just sent us a letter that by 18th, they will shut down the plant because we owe them more than $400 million. IPPs alone, we owe them $1.7 billion. And so it's serious. 
The problem is simple. The government buys electricity at high cost and sells it to consumers at a lower price. And when consumers don't pay, the system bleeds money. The new gas plant will help solve that. It will use cheap local gas, reduce pressure from oil imports, and stabilize power grid. How life would have been for the Republic of Ghana without the gas processing plant one, the Tuabo gas? In fact, um, without the Atuabo gas, Ghana would have been in a deep trouble. The fiscal drain, the economic drain, the tariffs that we'll be paying wouldn't have been easy at all. But unfortunately, when we were leaving office in 2016, we had enough gas to be able to power the entire power plant and even excess. But nothing has been done since we left, uh, only for us to return to see a major, major, major shortfall in terms of gas supply to power our gas processing plants, and our, our power, uh, our thermal plants. Today, after our exercise, it came to us as a shock that Ghana requires at least $1.1 billion dollars annually to buy light crude oils, heavy fuel oils, and other diesel fuel oils to be able to power our thermal plants. Yet, the consumer is not paying for this kind of fuel. And it means that the Ministry of Finance will have to look for money to fund this amount. And the shortfall is quite a lot. 1.1 billion dollars is today's exchange rate. You are talking about 15 billion. 15 billion cities. This 15 billion cities is about three and a half times the goods and services we use to run the entire government machinery. Three and a half times. And so the problem as we see is far bigger than what the country can accommodate. This simple means that we have to we have to fast track this gas processing plant too. And you are right. Two years of savings will be enough to repay this gas processing plant. And I'm surprised to hear that the previous administration, after so many years of talk, were unable to begin the process of acquiring a second gas processing plant. Honorable Minister. I want to also use this opportunity to urge the technical committee to expedite action and for us to quickly resolve the concerns that have raised. We need to have a second gas processing plant as soon as possible. And I believe that the technical committee will be able to finish their work in time for us to commission a contractor or a business to be able to build a second gas processing plant. It is so important for our country, so important for our welfare, and so important for the economy to run. And so I want to use this opportunity to thank you for your leadership and to thank the committee members there that we are inaugurating them here. And also to urge them that, please, enough of the bureaucracy. Let's get to work and let's resolve the issues as soon as possible. I don't know, Minister, if you are giving them some timelines. But I think a month or two should be enough. A month or two should be enough for them to finish their work. And um, I'm sure you'll be able to I'll give them a month. So, that's so if we give you a month, I'm sure, um, Chair, uh, a month should be enough. Take less tea and a little bit more biscuit. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be able to uh, uh, finish this within a matter of four weeks, uh, up to a month, so that the steering committee will meet to complete it and submit same to cabinet for approval. Energy is more than about electricity. It's about jobs, healthcare, industry, and education. With this plant, Ghana is investing in its future. One that's cleaner, smarter, and more secure. 
For Ghana, the path forward is clear. Use what the country already has, its own gas, to power what it needs most, which is electricity, for its people, its economy, and its future. And that is all for today's episode. Please let us know your thoughts and suggestions on this in the comment section below. My name is Sheriff Haruna, reporting for AS1 News. Have a joyful life and see you in the next one. Macrao.